All right, how's everybody doing today? Welcome back to You Don't Know Ball. And I figured today it's only right we take a little break from anything draft related to address the Stefan Diggs trade situation, my thoughts about it, and why most importantly, and really the reason I'm making the video is because, you know, at least initially, at least what I was reading, hearing most people's thoughts, it kind of seems like, you know, well, the Texans completely fleeced and this is an L for the Bills. Not at all the way I see it. And again, I want to break down exactly why I feel that way and kind of just perhaps the trajectory of Stefan Diggs' career to this point. Why that for the Bills, losing Stefan, especially at this point, is far from the end of the world. And actually, I think it mutually benefits both sides a ton. So let's get right into it. So it's only right that we start right looking at the stats, the numbers that we can take in. You know, as we already know, if you've been watching football, you, you know Stefan Diggs is a productive receiver. Again, didn't hit that thousand yard season till that fourth year in the league. And that fifth year, right, right when he comes off that best season, traded because it was going on with the Vikings uh, off the extension. Now, again, we go back and look, right, let's see where things started to go wrong. And perhaps Stefan started to maybe show some true colors that doesn't rub everybody the right way. So again, first tweet right here, and this is all the way back February 6, 2020. Some things are better left unsaid. Got this one right here. I don't forget or forgive. I hate people. They do you wrong then try to play the victim. People don't appreciate things till they're gone. Now again, this first time we're seeing these colors from Stefan, right? Seeing the, the passion for a better situation. And again, me personally, not a fan of this type of behavior, but if it's just a one-time thing and we don't know the whole story, right? Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes acting like this, perhaps it may be forcing your hand. You know, I don't know the situation. So if it's a one-off case, right? I'm not gonna look too much into it. But as we know, with Stefan, that's not the story. Now, again, back to the stats, because it's only right that we come back, address the time in Buffalo. Now, again, that first season in Buffalo, all pro receiver, career high in receptions, also led the league that season. Uh, just, and again, targets went up egregious in Buffalo. I mean, look at the jump we have in targets. We went from the highest being 149 over the course of five seasons to we have not had less than that four straight seasons in a row. Right now, I think all this is important to consider when we also consider that for whatever reason, throughout Stefan's entire tenure in Buffalo, he just seemed rather disgruntled. And again, I'm not just saying this out of speculation. We can go and observe Stefan's thoughts that he put out for us again on Twitter, or should I say X nowadays? I'm still getting used to that. So for those of you who don't remember, I feel like the best way that we could, you know, illustrate when things really started to go downhill was probably this moment right here. And again, I'm gonna play the clip for you right here courtesy of uh, NFL and CBS's Twitter. And again, you know, I'm sure you've all seen this before, but... Here, you know, Diggs wants to win. You know, he's a highly emotional player. They love each other, but right there he's like... What? Right, okay, so we've seen that. And again, in this game, Josh didn't, right, Josh didn't play his best ball, the Bills didn't play their best ball. Tough loss. Now, at the same time, again, again, if this was just one offense, that, which we know at this point is not with Stefan, I don't think much of it. But again, so was snowball effect here, right? We're starting to see the writing on the wall, perhaps. And so shortly after, during that same offseason, we get this strand of tweets here. Want me to be okay with losing? Nah. Want me to be okay with our level of play when it's not up to the standard? Nah. It's easy to criticize my reaction more than the result. And then also on Instagram, I just be letting people cap. If the lies help you sleep better, tell them, big dog. Okay. So again, you know... Just to address things straightforward, some of these, right, some of the tweets and stuff, it's not that I disagree with Stefan at all, right? Like, I understand where Stefan is coming from in terms of how he feels. But as we all know, or I would say, I can't say as we all know, everyone approaches things differently. But as, as I see things, when you are a part of such a large organization with so many people that give you attention and people that make stories about you and your life is magnified, it's not a good idea to be putting negative situations like this out to the public because then instead of quelling it behind closed doors or like grown-ups, we're bringing everyone into a situation, making drama out of a situation, making a scene out of a situation. And so it's like, to me, does that really say you want to fix the situation or do you want out of the situation? And again, the key word is really that you want out of the situation where I think a lot of us started to feel this way, right? about a year or two ago, I say like about two years ago now, when this had happened. So again, when you start putting the, right, when you start putting all these events together, you're saying to yourself, 
How much longer is Stefan going to last in Buffalo? How much longer is Josh Allen going to tolerate this? How much longer is the organization going to tolerate this? Because at the end of the day, everyone's going to feel some type of way about you coming and bringing this business to the light. And then very recently, before the trade, we got the strand of tweets. There was a heart emoji and then ready for whatever, followed by well with four dots, you know, let, let you know, well, well, what Stefan? And again, obviously where it all came crashing to a halt. And funny enough, literally the day before he was traded. This was surely the moment that the Bills said to themselves, this isn't going to work anymore. You know, he's letting us know that he doesn't want to make it work anymore. There's no other way to look at it. Right here, you know, does Josh Allen benefit from having a top two receiver? Yes. Is he essential to his success? No. Being said by somebody else at the Peaky Pirate here. However, then Stefan responds, you sure? Question mark. Obviously being facetious, obviously implying essentially that he is more valuable than Josh Allen right? There's no other way we can cut that. So that's just obviously how he feels. Bills say, fuck this. You know, I'm done dealing with this. There's always some in the off season with us. If you've been following, you don't know ball for a while. You know, this is starting to even frustrate me a little bit here because this feels like that there's every, uh, you know, every off season we're talking about Stefan being disgruntled. But again, it's funny because we go back to the stats. And as I pointed out earlier, which is why I think that I wanted you to really acknowledge this is where, right? He didn't have his way here where Target's way lower, right? You come to Buffalo and you're getting targeted 154 times at the least over four seasons. You're very high priority on this team. You're definitely getting your share. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense that you want to be disgruntled when you're in such a good situation for yourself. And now again, I completely understand not being happy getting the results you wanted. But sometimes in life, that's how things are going to go. And it's the way you respond that dictates how much improvement can be gauged off of it. Again, when, when you're going to be causing uh, scenes and be causing stories and you're going to be breaking relationships apart off these tough losses, well, of course, it's going to be harder to bounce back and come back the same season. It's very easy right now for Stefan to kind of say, as he has been saying, that the reason he wants out is the lack of success. But at the same time, maybe we can point to the lack of success from the lack of the way that we approach the situation with good integrity once it's over with, if you're following what I'm saying, right? Like it's just, it's easy to blame it all on the bills, Josh Allen, everyone else, but maybe you're part of it. Like maybe the way you approach things when they don't go right brings everyone else down. And that seems to be the case, right? As of recent, if we just acknowledge the timeline. Another thing I had forgot to bring up earlier, but still was a part of the timeline, squeezed kind of in between here. If you'll remember last year, about midway through the year, said, you know, uh, said his brother, Trayvon Diggs, all, you know, amazing corner, But at the same time, adding to the drama, man, 14, got to get up out of there, emojis. And again, now you got family bringing the business public, making people ask questions. And if you're the Bills, you know, you just, you you started asking yourself, you know, how much is this worth? And obviously to them, it wasn't worth it anymore. Now, again, something that everybody really needs to be reminded about, because this is really where things start to get frustrating, especially if you're a Bills fan, right? Like if you're a Bills fan, I'm sure this was the play right here. And even, again, I'm not a Bills fan at all, but I remember watching this very play live. And the only thing I'm thinking to myself, literally, is, you know, after all the drama and everything Stefan said about things not being up to the standard, biggest moment of your career, arguably, up to this point, biggest would have been catch of your career. Let's just, again, let's see what happens. If you forgot about this play, This was when they were down 24-27 in the divisional round. Now, again, let's take a look. Acknowledge the play. He drops it. And a laser from Josh Allen right over the shoulder. Don't think he drops it. You think he got tipped? I'll let let y'all acknowledge the other angle as well. Take a look with me. And I'll even, matter of fact, I, I got it because I even had to pause a few times myself just to make sure I said, no, what did his foot come and kick it? I got to make sure I'm giving him every benefit of the doubt and looking at it from every angle. You can see very clearly right through the hands. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you one more angle without pause because you saw the pause angle, but you know, it, it looks even more obvious without the pause. But again, I just, you, you have to just be sure, but it, again, would have been, see the whole sideline. I want you to watch the sideline because the body language of sideline speaks volumes right here. Everybody's excited. 
Stefan, you've been talking all of this. It's finally our chance to get past our biggest rivals of recent, the ones been holding us down. Stefan, you're going to be the one to help us do it. We can move past this chapter together. Everyone getting excited? Wait. And then, bam. Everybody just, man, oh, man, hands on the hip, man. Oh, because, you know, it's almost like, I don't know, when you cause this many issues and you, you're the storyline of the offseason every offseason. And then you don't make this play, right? Well, the consensus has to question why you feel the need to be making all these scenes if in these moments you're not going to slip up as well. Because again, I want to be clear. I don't want this to come off like I'm uh, like on Stefan's case or anything. Again, I think Stefan Diggs is a fantastic receiver. That's actually what makes all these antics so frustrating is because the target perhaps on the uh, like back when it comes to these type of stories about Stefan wouldn't be there if he wasn't making them himself. But when you make all these stories and narratives and then this was the biggest play of your career, you know, I, play, I gotta play one more time, it's, it's just a bad look. And there's no two ways about it. Again, I wouldn't be harping on this so much if it wasn't just so magnifying of the unfortunate reality that in a lot of these big games, Stefan's not at his best either. So it comes from a place of, you know, again, it's the whole look in the mirror thing. Is it only the Bills? Is it only Josh Allen? Or Stefan, were you a part of the issue? And just to clarify, by the issue, I mean the issue of not making it to Lombardi land, winning the Super Bowl, bringing it back home to Buffalo. But now on the other hand, you know, you're probably asking yourselves, if Stefan right, is so problematic and he has all these things, well, how exactly are, are, is he going to work on the Texans? How is this a win for the Texans then? Well, I'm glad you asked because in my logic, number one, we've already seen, right? CJ Stroud, leader of men, right? Like the, all those guys in that locker room gravitate towards CJ. Everyone has very good things to say about CJ. When you see CJ interact with the media, the way he approaches life in general, in my opinion, just doing it the right way, just a guy who has his head in the right spot. And again, a guy who more than anything is going to probably be understanding of Diggs' personality type and be accommodating as much as he can be. And again, that's not really what it, all that it is though, because I always look at things from the football sense, right? When I really look at it from the situational perspective, we can go ahead and look back at CJ Stroud's college career and we can see that when he always had alpha dogs all around him, he was making sure they were all eating. Again, we'll come back to 2021 here first, but you know, we take a look. Can you look at the receiving yards? Running back was eating well, Travion Henderson. Garrett Wilson, eating really well. Jackson Smith and Jigba, they just had a very, very good connection, eating incredibly well also. Then again, you got Chris Olave, eating real good over here. Jeremy Ruckert, NFL tight end, as well as eating solid, 309 yards. And again, this was before Marvel's getting really those rotations, still a youngin. But even then, 11 catches, 139 yards, three scores, you know, still looking Marv's way. And then we go over to 2022. Again, same story. Making sure everyone eats, making sure that Egbuka, who again, if Egbuka came out this year, I think we're talking about a guy who would be taken earlier than later. And, you know, still, again, very talented receiver. Stayed another year to boost that stock. Cannot blame him. Totally understand where he's coming from. So again, 1,151 yards from him. Got Marv eating 1,263. Cade Stover eating well, Julian Fleming eating well before the transfer. I mean, again, it's just, and again, JSN just wasn't healthy this year. So just not really much production from JSN. But the point is, is that CJ is the guy who in college had all these alpha dogs around him, made sure they all, all ate. And funny enough, you know, you have all these guys, when, you, when you've heard them talk, Chris, Garrett, um, uh, JSN, all have very positive things to say about him. They all, they all love CJ. So what I'm really trying to say is, Stefan Diggs' personality type, first, perhaps combative, and you know it can be hard for him to uh, get along with everybody, right? It's just the best way to put it. I think CJ is going to be the perfect leader for him, the perfect guy to understand. I got to make sure that I'm feeding my dog at least you know a fair amount each game, and I'm going to because we're going to keep it under wraps. If he's not feeling right, you know we have a talk. We're going to figure it out. I think CJ is that kind of guy. Whereas, not that Josh isn't. But again, Josh didn't have definitely that same repertoire in college, didn't have to deal with all those mouths to feed. And again, he really has never had to deal with that. He wasn't doing that in college. He hasn't had to do the NFL yet. And 
he just it just didn't work out with Stefan in Buffalo. That's just the easy way, easy way to put it. Like the, the reality situation is personality types obviously clashed. Well, however, they made it seem like that it was working behind the scenes. It just at the end of the day didn't work all the way that well. But again, I'm only speculating. I can't be certain that taking Stefan, putting him in Houston is just going to make all these problems go away, right? But last thing here we have to touch on, because it is very interesting, and it does apply very much to the story and the narrative right now, is Stefan, just the news broke today, that they are cutting the rest of the years of the contract, making him a free agent next year. And I'm sure, right, you probably are saying to yourself, as many people will be, well, why the fuck would, number one, would Stefan do that? You could understand it from the perspective of the Texans where they're saying to themselves, if you don't play as well and your value goes down, well, then we get a chance to resign you for less. But it's also risky because if Stefan's not happy, then you trade it. But you also can get that compensatory pick back. So it sounds a little bit crazy. For the Texans, it makes more sense. But then on Stefan's end, definitely a little lot more risky. But then back to the point of, well, why? You know, why? Well, obviously, Stefan is betting on himself. He's having a bet on himself moment. He says, nah, I think I actually can be worth more than these years were going to pay me. And I'm going to prove it. And if I produce, I'm sure the Texans are going to be ready to pay that. And that's kind of how that situation is going to unfold. But I just think it's very interesting why I want to bring it up is because just maybe if things don't go his way this season, do we see part I don't know. I don't even know what part we'd be at now in the Stefan saga of the disgruntlement and having negative things to say. Well, certainly possible. And I think it's just very interesting because this happening was something you just really never see where it definitely makes sense on both sides, but much less on Stefan's side because he's really betting on himself. It's definitely going to be something to keep our eye on. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully help you understand a little bit more the whole Stefan Diggs saga, you know, where things are at now, where things were that led up to this. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.